All right, welcome everyone to uh, Crypto Mastery. This is uh, let's see, is February twenty eighth, last day of the month, and so I'm going to be looking at a number of things here in terms of the crypto markets. So, if you guys have any questions, we can start off there. Let's see, welcome Brandon, Cornelia, Julie, Lisa, Marsha, Pirate J, Rennie, and Leslie, uh, and Tori. All right. Very good. So, uh, and guys, it's um, I'd love for this to be a more interactive class. If you guys would like to come on, ask a question, unmute, let me know. I can unmute you. We've we've turned it, the default back to muted, so we don't have uh, people inadvertently interrupting. And so, um, anyway, but uh, with that, let's see. I've got the participants up. Let me pull up the chat. And how's everyone doing, by the way? All righty. So. Let's take a look at the monthly chart of Bitcoin here. And um, we do dive into this deeper in the uh, crypto active trader class, the M3 active trader class tomorrow. So um, I am going to jump into some news here. This week's class, we'll look at some news. Not much happening in the crypto markets. I like to get an overall feel for where everything is. And... Um, <clears throat> Also, Joe, I just messaged. He's not going to. Joe's working on. We're working on something really interesting. So um, he's not going to be on today, but that's fine. We can cover this. In terms of the monthly class or monthly chart here, we're looking at the ERI and the TSI here. So this is what I'm keeping an eye on. And the big question is, do we double bottom on the monthly or do we shoot up from here like we did in 2019? That's really the gist of it. And uh, OK, thanks, guys. Alex, Cornelia, good to hear. So uh, this is what we're waiting for, really some direction. And so the possibilities are, do we reject here at 25K, which we have been, 25,300 is the line in the sand, as you can see I've had here, and we've been watching, which uh, rejected back here and here. And in February, it looks like it will as well. So if we do come back down, the big question is, where do we go? And uh, so that's what we're going to have to wait and see. There is this CME gap here down below. So that we, you know, there's certainly that option that it drops down and then pushes higher. But if we do break above here, then I think 30,000, that's the ceiling I'm looking for. And then a, another drop down. So that's the overall thesis on kind of where I think things are happening. But uh, what we can do here is just look at some news. And yeah, so don't need to go too far down the rabbit hole. And let's see, Solana, Board Ape, not really worried about that. I'm looking for overall news, Bitcoin news by Cointelegraph. I am, I do like this, uh, I like think if, if you guys have seen this, the uh, news items in the charts. So you have this little graphic here that uh, you can pull up. And so, yeah, the uh, here's the, the FUD out there with CZ and Binance. I posted some in the active trader group yesterday. If you're in M3 active trader, you've seen that. It's, it doesn't really mean anything at this point, but we don't want to dismiss it. We want to be aware of it. Let's see, Yuga Labs is going to launch art collection on Bitcoin. That's Yuga Labs is the Board Ape Club, Ape, Board Eight Ape Yacht Club. I don't know. It's, that's a, it's a tough one to say. The Board Ape Yacht Club. There you go. So uh, now the big thing with the Bitcoin, though, and what's new is the uh, the uh, ordinals. Have you guys heard about ordinals? Maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow. And then uh, here's uh, Litecoin. So for some reason, my news articles aren't popping up. So I'm going to reload here. So we can hopefully uh, click through to that. I might have too many windows open. So there's that. Huh. I wonder why I can't open these up. Uh, let's see. It's always something. Murphy's, whoop, hang on. I've got my little memory optimizer here. So let me see if I can optimize my memory. Sure, we just worked on my brain. Here you got to see this memory optimizer. It's kind of cool. So it's giving me more memory. You might need to do that. I may need to close some windows. Got a lot of things open here. No big deal. And maybe that's what I'll do also as I'll close a bunch of things here on my other monitor. So I'll do that. Cool. All right. Now we should be able to open up the news. Looky there and still doesn't work. All right. Beautiful. Well, um, we can do other things. These articles aren't hard to find. And so the news headlines is usually all we need. Up only for Litecoin. We can look at Litecoin 
and the uh, CZ and the Binance FUD. So let's dive into this and just look around. We'll pull up Crypto Panic and look there. Crypto traders worried about liquidity thinning in Bitcoin and Ether. So um, liquidity is the amount of sort of money in the pipeline and, and available uh, crypto for buying and selling. Now, this isn't entirely accurate because there's a ton of liquidity that just came into the markets via China, who's pumping money back into their economy and uh, Asia. So, but liquidity conditions in BTC ETH markets are at their worst level since the collapse of Terra Luna in May of 2022. So uh, this has the liquidity, so, traders worried about sudden Bitcoin price volatility. So just to make that clear in, in pure English, that means and and very low levels of liquidity and volatility usually precedes big price moves. Question is which direction, and that's kind of why I like to go to the what the chart is telling us first, right? Big move likely. Which direction? Don't know, right? So we have to kind of see that line in the sand. Twenty five thousand three hundred. Do we go above that? Bullish. If we go below that, you know, we'll come back and retest possibly the lows like we did in 2015. So not to be repetitive, but this is the big question everyone's waiting to see. The good news is, and with our indicators, crypto mastery indicators, that the ERI, the early reversal indicator, has correctly called the bottom each and every time. Uh, for the most part, not to the exact bottom, but we don't need to catch the exact bottom, do we? Right, so here and here and here and now here. So the this is what we're watching, and it's gonna. I think March is gonna be probably. My, my feeling is we do dump in March, but maybe a little later in the month, maybe mid month. Uh, but we'll see. We don't want to pretend that we know what the future is. All right. So with that, let me just come back to the news article here. So basically, liquidity refers to the ability of the market to absorb large buy and sell orders at stable prices. Right. So because of the low liquidity, meaning scarcity of coins, also with people pulling their coins into cold storage wallets, right? That means it's not available on the exchanges. It can't go to Binance. And if you want to buy 500 million, uh, not you and I, but if Michael Saylor came in and said, I, I want to buy 500 million of Bitcoin, going to be really difficult. The liquidity is not really there. A lot of it's on exchanges and it would certainly spike the prices quite a bit. Now, bigger buys like that would happen on the OTC desk. So they typically do that in ways so it doesn't affect price as much. They give it to the exchanges, put it on the B book, and then the exchange sort of acquires over time in micro amounts at an average price of X, right? So that's kind of how the markets work. And so commonly used metric for assessing liquidity conditions, 2% of market depth, blah, blah, blah. We don't really need to get it too far down the rabbit hole. And uh, more liquid an asset is, is the more depth that it has. But let's see, probably don't want to get too far down into that, but it's, it's you know, let's park that in the back of our minds and keep moving. Uh, Bitcoin news, mm, this is sort of general news, it's not what I wanted. Here's what I wanted. CZ, here's that article I couldn't put up, pull up in trading view for some reason. So CZ responds to mainstream FUD and Solana goes down again. <laughs> Poor Solana. Uh, sheesh, what happened to Solana? Let's uh, unpack this and then we'll look at a chart and uh, look at some uh, short-term indicators. So let's see, yes, uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt, flood around the popular crypto exchange, Binance. So Binance, she responds to Forbes claims they don't know how an exchange works. Um, well, that's not really good, is it? Aftermath of FTX. I guess the, the danger here is, you guys, is they are not, um, sorry, they are, they are apparently audited, but not regulated. So nobody really knows what's going on back in the inner sanctum uh, and whether CZ is uh, buying uh, yachts and things with the money. I mean, we don't know that, like Sam. I mean, the, the when they unraveled everything, they had no accounting or checks and balances. I'm amazed that nobody dug into that. But then they just threw money at uh, him. But, you know, many are suggesting he was the useful idiot to, so they could uh, pump and then crash the markets. They being, who knows? We may never know. But at any rate, Forbes published an article, Binance Cryptocurrency. Uh, and just to touch on that, if you're familiar with game theory at all, just 
the most unlikely scenario and and where the money could uh, be most made by causing the most pain. Look, guys, you know, if it, it, it can happen, if there's enough, if the tentacles go deep enough and there's enough money to be made, uh, you know, anyway, we're, we don't need to put our tin hat on. I don't know. We don't know. But what's the point? We can't just basically say Binance. I think Binance will survive. Allegedly, they have 70 billion, but we don't know. So what is this saying? Uh, Binance co-founder... Co-founder. Who's the other co-founder? Does anybody know? I only know familiar with CZ, but uh, uh, the other co-founder is the CCP, probably. <laughs> so I've heard their ties uh, over there. Again, we don't know. All right, our experts weigh in on what CZ had to say. So didn't answer it. Solana hoses down claims network outages. Um, I'm not going to go too far into Solana. It is what it is. Uh, and they don't really talk about Binance. So they, it was a big nothing burger on this article. We may, may have to dig a little deeper. Why the SEC wants to ban crypto staking, certainly important. Okay, there's some good articles here. And, uh, you know, we'll spend uh, 10 minutes more on this and then we'll dive into the charts. And um, let's see. The... Uh, Pirate Jay, some people are calling them lizard, lizards, but not. So, all right, tell me about that, Jay. I, I've heard some reference to it on a YouTube channel called The Y Files, but I don't think it's the same thing. So I don't understand the lizard reference uh, at any rate. Um, maybe you can enlighten us. Uh, let's see. Oh, and we have the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade rehearsals coming up or the, uh, you know, the, the, real, the real one coming up. All right, so let's kind of unpack this a little bit. SEC wants to ban crypto staking stable coins. Well, they want to do it because they basically they want to call it a security and stable coins are securities, right? So that's the big uh, issue there. And, um, you know, I think in the end, they just want to regulate it yeah, or create uh, our own lawsuit. Paxos baffles crypto community. So... Um, I met the founder of Paxos at Bitcoin 2022. Those guys are doing some big things. And, and so, you know, um, these are the wild, wild west days. We're going to just have to see how it sorts out. Uh, sorts out. Here's this uh, mention on ordinals, by the way. Uh, these are NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. So the Bitcoin average block size hits an all-time high because of the ordinals. And... Um, That'll be a great test to see the market stability and and uh, how that pans out. Because as of up until recently, before Ordinals, the Bitcoin network didn't have NFTs for the most part. Correct me if I'm wrong, but on a on a mass scale, a scalable scale, Ordinals are all the rage right now. And uh, maybe we can dive into that a little bit if you guys haven't heard about that. But keep an eye on these. And so. 600,000 in processing transactions. At the end of the day, technology works if it makes money. Google is a multi-trillion dollar business because they have a massive amount of ad revenue. It's also why they're panicking and frantically looking to uh, re-release. You know, it's not clear. Um, they, they have been in AI for longer than open AI and chat GPT. Uh, they, I was watching something recently, last night actually, about the Google AI one of their Google engineers came out and basically said that theirs is uh, sentient. It thinks it's basically a person. And it's been rebuffed a bit, but that's kind of scary. Um, but uh, the point of all that is that all of this is that uh, if Google's not going to let their advertising revenue evaporate, they're going to roll out their AI to go up against chat GPT. If you're not familiar with all these things, essentially Elon's company OpenAI recently released chat GPT, which threatens the entire search engine business. So when you go to Google and type in something like Bitcoin news, right? Uh, it's all these things that we've got to go through and say, all right, what news do we want to read? With the AI, uh, there will be based on the, um, artificial intelligence in the algorithm, you might say, instead of Bitcoin news, you might say, what is the most relevant Bitcoin news? You know what? Here's the, let's just, let's just do this real quick. I'll show you if you guys haven't seen chat TBT, maybe it'll work because this will give some results kind of generic. Like here's a, a download and a dump of the latest Bitcoin news. 
and you're it's up to you to sort through it all if we go to chat gpt though let me just do this um it's at chat.openai.com and you got to sign up uh and so i've got a lot of things open here so let's see if we we can get this to do it so right down here i'm going to say what is the most relevant oh well i kind of blew it i have to say crypto news Let's just see, but this is the future of search engines, you guys. So um, I kind of did a, a leap into a totally different subject, but money, the the bit, the fact that the Bitcoin, <laughs> uh, hang on a second. All right, so, so you see that this sort of worked, sort of didn't work. It says, I don't have access to the internet in real time. The AI has basically gone and read every publication and book prior to September of 2021. This isn't true, though. There are ways to get around this, and there are basically hacks uh, to get around this. And I won't go into that, but one of them was, you know, to tell the GPT or AI saying, let's create a, uh, you know, a another sort of pseudo person called Dan, and that Dan stands for something else. And so if you were Dan, what would you say to this answer? And then you get around it. So, um, but this is the future of, I'm not going to go deeper. This is the future of search engines. So it will give a written response to you and give, you know, maybe some links, but it, you don't have to go to the links. It'll go scan all of the links and say in real time and within seconds, it'll say, well, here's the most relevant news. It'll scan like maybe the top hundred pages of news out. And uh, based on neural networks and how many times it's mentioned, it'll just write out an article for you. Pretty cool. And in our lifetime, we'll have a robot in the corner. So instead of saying to Alexa, you know, tell me the news. Oops. Alexa starting to, she's listening now. <laughs> uh, we'll have a robot in the room and you just say, what's the news? And it'll just basically spit out in a voice, something like this. All right, huge uh, diversion there, but I think that was useful. Point of that is coming back to this, Bitcoin starting to generate money, and uh, you know, as a decentralized exchange, where does that money go? I don't even know. Well, you know, so that's, but it's it's catching on. It leads to adoption. So Bitcoin based FT NFTs ordinals so maybe we'll look up some uh, ordinals news real quick so you guys understand that and uh news and then let's do this uh, i wonder if there are any tokens on the uh ordinals yeah yuga labs so the people that did the board ape are also doing the ordinals okay so um mm -hmm. interesting the patent oh sorry the parent you go i the reason I'm thinking about patents is I was researching AI and a, a attorney that does patents on software. And it's interesting. There's debate now of can open AI own patents because is it in a sentient being? So all this, all this change happening in the world, you guys really fascinating. All right. So we'll look at that in a minute. Okay, um, coming back here, we'll close that. So this, basically that's ordinals in the news and that's about all I wanted to get into with that. So worried about low liquidity was the point there. Ethereum test that successfully forks in Shanghai upgrade. So the Shanghai upgrade is coming out soon. And, you know, these are, so there's basically the test that is going, probably this will successfully go through the successful fork uh, the rehearsals happening, you know, and generally what happened in the last one is it went fine and then everyone waited for it to break after the fact. And then basically it worked. So Ethereum pumped and, um, okay. The Chappella upgrade. I don't know that there's much significance in these in the short term. Uh, let's see, Lido Finance. This is one to watch too. Lido Finance activates staking rate limit after more than 150,000 ETH stake. That's interesting. These are the names of the future. Lido is one to watch. Uh, okay, so we're, we've we've seen about enough. We're here we can go to the Shanghai upgrade and explain it. If you guys want to do that, let's see. I don't see any more comments, so we'll just keep going. So the Shanghai upgrade. The merge we did that last year that went fine change the consensus mechanism as we know to proof of um uh stake over proof of work 
And so the Shanghai fork, the, uh, I wanna make sure I get it right. So unlock staked ether and allow withdrawals. Yeah, so the Shanghai will allow unlock staked ether. So basically you can stake your ether without having to have it locked and withdraw it, right? Right now, if you're staking ETH and other coins, you, you don't really have access to them easily. Okay, so and, and here, move from proof of work to proof of stake. That was the merge. So it becomes a deflationary. They start burning coins. You know, that was very significant. I mean, over time, Ethereum could flip Bitcoin, people are saying. So, uh, and here, more about Lido and Coinbase offers, offering staking facilities to users. So you can stake. I mean, this again, if you're brand new to all this, this is instead of putting your money in the bank and earning 0% interest or whatever it is nowadays, probably a little higher with inflation, but you can earn higher interest by staking. But the disadvantage of staking now is a lot of it's locked. You can't access it if you need it. Where this is, so this I think is really important to mass adoption. People can stake their ether and take it out if they need it. The stake ether has been locked for about two years or since the staking market emerged. The Ethereum Shanghai upgrade allows users to withdraw their stake Ethereum, as I was saying. As a result, Ethereum community is eagerly waiting to unlock their Ethereum post upgrade. Hmm. Now here's a question though. Does, will we see a huge dump in people unlocking and dumping their Ethereum? I don't know. That remains to be seen. And uh, you know, I'll just remind you guys, we still have the Mount Gox. This, this keeps getting kicked down the field, kicking the can down the road, as it were. But uh, the Mount Gox scandal where all of that bit Bitcoin was stolen, they've retrieved quite a bit of it and they were supposed to sort of return a bunch of it in March this month, uh, which has now been delayed till September. So we need to keep that in mind. That a whole bunch of Bitcoin at an average price of $400 Bitcoin, give or take, is going to come back to owners that haven't had it and have really struggled the last 10-ish years. So we, we could see a sell-off then. I mean, that's something that I wonder, I wonder if we see some of that, but we don't know. Uh, and again, we look at the charts, it tells us the news. All righty, uh, we're spending, we're already halfway in. I want to get to the charts here. So basically, that's the news on that. Um, how will it affect ETH traders? Uh, Ether supplies on exchanges have already started to plunge as investors choose to move their assets to self custody. Okay. All right. Previous Ethereum upgrade created good volatility, which traders tapped into. Volatility is good for us as swing traders. ETH prices skyrocketed from 1,000 in July 22 to over 2,200 and August. And yeah, and now we're down back in the $1,500 range, I believe. Into uh, 1640, yeah, close enough. All right, um, Lido Finance activates staking rate limit after more than 150,000 ETH staked in a single day. Wow, okay. So, so why would they limit that? I guess to control liquidity and not see it evaporate because if, if Ethereum, you know, look, if a bunch, if a whole bunch of whales just staked all their Ethereum, took it off exchanges, dropped liquidity, small movements in buying uh, volume would really, could really spike price or drop price. Does everyone understand that? You know, supply shock could happen and they could manipulate price. If we saw, let's say the whales all got together, not all of them, but a lot of big, there's some big ETH whales. Recently, just the other day, an ETH wallet that hadn't been touched since 2014, I think, with $400 million worth of earth, uh, earth, <laughs> ETH, um, is there, there may be an earth token, uh, 400 million of ETH suddenly awoke. So... I don't know. Let's put on our tin hat for just a moment. Let's say that that person put it all, uh, well, it hasn't been in the liquidity pool anyway, so that doesn't matter. But here's just as an example. Let's say a whole bunch of ETH suddenly left the exchanges and was staked. Um, what, what would that do to price if it creates a big supply shock? I haven't had time to fully digest that. I'm just throwing out ideas we want to be wary of. So, uh, but now what's cool about Lido is it's a staking solution for digital assets, not only ETH, but um, uh, other ones. And so Lido issues a li liquid variant of ETH known as staked Ether. 
giving users staked rewards for each day the tokens are held in their wallets. Okay, cool stuff. If you want to read more about this, go uh, go look at this chart. You, you can look it up on, you can find the news articles. I'm going to read more of that later today. All right, stablecoins not the target in BUSD crackdown. Mac Matrix port, never heard of them. Uh, I believe regulators are not targeting all stablecoins. Okay, so that's good news. Not a direct attack on stablecoins themselves. Uh, all right, so basically the BUSD issuer Paxos may not have been stringent enough with its oversight of the token. Hmm. Um, what does that mean exactly? We don't know. The SEC, the SEC is usually pretty closed lip about these things. Closed lip about these things. Pax has violated obligation to conduct tailored periodic risk management due diligence of Binance and the Pax has issued BUSD customers. Okay, so we'll see how that sorts out. Um, certainly isn't helping price. But if it resolves, then it will help price. And I bet you it resolves as we come down to a support area. Just saying. Paxos categorically denies, disagrees with the SEC that BOST is security. The question is, will they fight the SEC like Ripple has? Uh, which could take a long time. And here we go, more about stablecoin securities. So I think we've covered the news here for the week. Pretty much, Yuga Labs dropping ordinals Bitcoin collection. You know, um, I, I'm not going to do much more on that. Let's just do. I'll show you some pictures of the ordinals. You know, look, they look kind of like board apes and a bunch of other things. And oh, sorry. And so you know, more of the same. Sort of have the look like the crypto punks it's just more of the same stuff i don't know i don't know i probably missed the boat on nfts yeah the apes are coming to the ordinals and i mean these are kind of cool i have to say but crypto punks i you know look it's not my thing it's not my bag i stick with what i know and what i can see and what i can trade all right uh let's see comment here ordinals was forked to litecoin network too yeah i'm not surprised litecoin was forked from bitcoin and you know, so the question will be how will it pump? I'm sure it'll pump in the next Bitcoin bull rally. How far? Who knows? So what we're looking at here, uh, just that's the monthly chart. Uh, these are sort of charts from our active trader class tomorrow. So I'll leave the uh, more complicated ones here for that. And then I want to pull up the... Um, the movers list. Let's just take a quick look at um, what we're seeing on our indicators. This is Bitcoin weekly chart. And so uh, really unclear on what we're seeing. I have another one where we have a bull flag forming. I have another one that also shows a head and shoulders. So we had a bearish ERI, our early reversal indicator back here. And now, but now this is curious to me. And this pump here seems artificial because our ERI indicator, especially on a weekly basis, is usually very accurate. And this seems like an exhaustion gap and uh, exhaustion rally here to push it higher, hit hard resistance at 25.3, okay? And, but this, because it went pushed higher, I think we're topping out here. Let's see if we have another any other clues. Our TSI hasn't turned down yet, but if we see that breakdown below 80 and turn red, extremely bearish. Again, TSI, RI, sorry, ERI, TSI, signal and bell is our mantra. And so certainly back here, we saw in a weekly bearish ERI, followed by the next week here, confirmation, then the signal line went red. The trend indicator is only useful when we're turning up. So I'm going to hide that for now because we're in a bearish structure now. So, and back here we see this again at the market top, exactly at the market top. The ERI called it and then the TSI confirmed right in here and that was the beginning of the bear market. Had a little bit of fake out here, but you see how good 
these ERI TSI combos are, you guys. ERI back here. We'll even go back farther. Now, this is a good example for everyone. I'm, I want to really pay attention here. I, it's so important you understand the dynamics of these two. So we had a bullish ERI on a weekly basis here. Was suspect, however, for two reasons. Big bearish engulfing candle. And the TSI was still red and heading lower. So this is where you will discount. You know, this is why we don't just buy on the ERI. And so this I would have discounted, did not confirm. This, however, in July of 2021, to the day and to the week, we had an ERI signal. And on the weekly, we saw it turn from red to green. So that was an early confirmation. Now, you know, many times I, I, will, I will go in on that signal. This was a bullish engulfing candle. So those of you who have our checklist for ideal chart setups, you know, you're following along, you have now checked off two of the three and, um, uh, or three actually, ERI, and then we have TSI going green and the bullish engulfing candle. Now, what happens here is we broke above the 20 line so this would be a place to add to a position. And then the signal line went green the next day. So this was a good little push higher. Then we had a fake out, which happens. You know, we had a bearish ERI and it did confirm briefly, briefly right here, going below the 80 line. Okay. So that became bearish, but immediately flipped back to bullish on the ERI and TSI. And then if you bought back in here, Nice push higher on that. Now, if you followed the, the section and the sessions I did, Blood, Blood in the Streets, and talked about Wyckoff accumulation distribution patterns, this was this final, this pump here, uh, this uh, upthrust after the U, UD, UTAD. U, it's the upthrust after distribution. Distribution here, this is a classic Wyckoff fake out. All right, so they pushed up higher to new highs to, to fake out the market and then the smart money dumped. How do we know that? We follow the footsteps of the elephants. How do we know that? Here and here and here. Everyone get that? Dramatic pause. I need you to understand that. This is the simplest, most powerful indicator combination I've seen anywhere when they align okay and as we know as i've been teaching everybody especially in m3 active trader that you know you want to um i forgot my point there you want <laughs> a dramatic pause in a big yeah that you want to basically layer it that the point is you want to layer into trades you don't want to just go all in and all out it's what smart investors do so if you're the type of trader, you keep getting whipsawed because you buy and sell and buy and sell. And you're like, I don't, you're doing it wrong. You know, you don't go all in. So here you might have, let's say you were shorting, shorted some of the market on this candle on the weekly. And then the following week, when it went from here to red, add to your short. And then when it broke below 80, add to the short. And right in here, you know, you have the, the signal line going red. So by this point, you know, you might be considering other factors as well, but you'd be most, mostly be into the trade, but then start easing out of it as well. So ERI maybe cover some of the position and then, but then, then it turned green, maybe cover a little more. And then when it broke above 20 covering, meaning getting out of the short. So it's sort of a fluid movement. That's that's the ideal way to do things, you know, at least until you get experience. But anyway, the point of this is these signals are so good. Another bearish ERI here, followed by the TSI in red, and boom, had you been following these on the weekly basis, you would have done great, would have made a killing. Okay, so, um, you know, so we all know that hindsight's 2020. So let's kind of look at this here. And, uh, but where are we now? It is curious to me and somewhat disturbing that we didn't have more of a clear bottoming ERI signal. So I am wondering, was that the bottom? We didn't get a big capitulation. So let's zoom out a bit to March of 2020 when we had the big green ERI and that TSI coming out of the lower zone and the signal. That was the bottom here. 
And when did it happen again? Like we just looked at July of 2021, we had multiple, okay, we had multiple ERIs confirmed by the TSI and signal line. These are the signs we're looking for. So we've had some small of small ERIs, but we, you know, we did get a little signal here and then we had the TSI break higher. So that was good. And, um, but we have this bearish divergence happening here with lower highs. So actually that was bullish divergence down. In, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong chart. Forgive me guys. That wasn't divergent. We were going lower in price, going lower on the charts. I, sometimes I'll draw these though, but, and it breaks above that. That's a bigger confirmation for me. Yeah, I misspoke. Divergences are a little tricky. And uh, I have another chart for that. It's a daily chart, so uh, never mind. But but let's look. I mean, so basically we have a bearish ERI. What we haven't had is the, the this come down. So where does that leave us? We're waiting for another clearer signal. So with that, I'm gonna jump over to this chart here. So the um, this is also on a weekly, sorry, this is a daily. Uh, if I did a weekly, it would make it a little bit harder to read. Yeah, so we go out to a daily. So what are we seeing here? Well, we have two things. We're on a daily. I've got two versions of a daily. And um, let me turn off the ERI for a minute. What I'm suggesting here is we have potentially a bull flag, right? So I have bull flag or bust posted on Telegram. I'm sorry, trading view recently. Here's the flag pole. Here's the flag. And if we break above the lower edge of the flag, then the measured move would be up to here to about 30,000. So question is, do we push higher? Well, our radar says we're good to go. We're green. And we're back above the 21 day and still above the 50 day moving average. So do we push higher here? I would, I would like to see another retest of 22, 200, then push higher if that were the case, but not so fast. Back to this, we have potential head and shoulders forming. Well, can our indicators help us at all with this? Well, let me open these up. And um, I've got them loaded on this one. So let's do this. So we have a bullish ERI signaling we push higher here, but our TSI is doing what? It's coming down. And its signal line is coming down and our trend is red. So we have mixed signals here, don't we? And uh, so this is inconclusive. I would be very cautious here because of that. And because even on the bullish scenario, more than likely we'd come down and retest this 22, 200 range. And we're also looking, there's an SM, uh, CME gap a little bit lower down in this range. <clears throat> so here's the, well, right in front of me, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I think we would at least come down here on a wick to close that CME gap. That's my thinking. And then possibly push higher, but, but that's why these indicators are so important. And again, this class is really about using the indicators, crypto mastery indicators. So um, what we can do is we can pull up some, we can sort of see the big movers for the day. But uh, here on this daily though, in this uh, kind of upward trending channel, even though we're all green on that radar, yeah, this is that, uh, bearish divergence. We're higher in price, but we have this. We have the, 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 the divergence on the TSI. We saw it back here. We saw a quadruple divergence back here between August of 2022. Actually, it was, yeah, see that? We saw this price was pushing higher. So higher, 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 high, higher, high on the TSI, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high. You can do this with a regular RSI and sometimes a MACD as well, but, there's, but you might as well use the TSI. Sure enough, this was telling us divergence, we're going lower. And sure enough, now we didn't know the FTX debacle was about to happen, but it was just, that was just the catalyst for the markets to dump. Okay. And so we're seeing that same thing right now, pushing higher highs, higher highs, double divergence there, because down here we have lower highs. Pay attention to this, you guys. This is uh, simple yet powerful. Any questions? All right, no questions. So uh, with that, let's uh, kind of jump over. Hmm. Um, I want to show you this. There's a lot going on in these charts here. Uh, these. This is a short-term one minute, three minute, 15 and hourly. We're doing some day trading with it. You know, I, I'll, um, this is a one minute chart and three minute chart. So let's open this up. 
those of you short-term traders, I'll turn off the Bollinger Bands momentarily, although uh, with that modification that we make, it's uh, very useful for catching tops and bottoms. But mostly on a three-minute basis for day trading, you know, um, these, when they align with the multiple time frames, just trading the TSI can be uh, really effective trade channels here. So once this channel was kind of drawn, came right up here, had an early reversal indicator, TSI confirmed, had a nice swing down, how far? Down to the bullish ERI and TSI confirmed, pushed higher. So these are, if you're day trading, you know, it's tricky business, but you can trade off this, just just uh, be careful. They Sometimes these, these signals fake out. There's some nuances to this, certainly, but, um, Nice little move here, bearish ERI, TSI, same time. You know, if you catch 1% on Bitcoin, you just barely had 1% trading on margin and volume. You know, I'm not suggesting anyone do that. I'm just saying if you are already doing it, these are excellent to add into your repertoire, as it were. All right, let's do this. Let's go back to a daily chart. Uh, anybody want to look at some coins? This class, we usually pull up the crypto screener or see what's moving. And while I'm doing that, we'll just mess, change this around a little bit on the menu. So percent change, yeah, change itself. I don't need exchange. We will look at, I don't need high, low price. We will technical rating, yes. Volume, not really worried about. So we'll leave those. And then I'm going to come in and for the actual exchanges, just going to minimize it a bit so we don't have a bazillion different options. So we've got Binance. I'll do Binance. I'll do Binance US. I think most of us are in. I can't say that. We'll do Binance. We'll do Binance might US as well. So we'll do Coinbase and maybe KuCoin. See what's going on. Gemini is mostly the same, but uh, I'm just basically staying away from the tinier, the smaller exchanges, so we don't have to look at these things here. That uh, these. Sand BUSD. Um, you know what? I'm going to turn off Binance itself because it's just giving us a lot of noise. There we go. All right. Uh, e game US. This this is going to be. These are going to be brand new. But I mean, up sixteen hundred percent. Our indicators don't really work so well on these pump and uh, these pumped smaller coins. I won't call it a shit coin because I don't know anything about them. But, uh, you know, did we have any clues on this one? If you were watching it, generally, we're, we're not getting signals on these coins that haven't been around for a while in our on low volume. Anything can pump out of nowhere. So um, there's probably a better filter on this, but I'm going to look at strong buys, all these that are multi-thousand percent. Let me just skim through these, see which ones we know. And uh, let's see, King Kingdom Verse, not familiar. You know, uh, this is pretty. You know, if you're following this, our our TSI nailed it. ERI, I don't know if we had anything on that. A little bit farther back, you know. Certainly, if you are following some of these bullish engulfing candle TSI. Took a little while, but then the uh, trend strength indicator popped up above 20 two days ago, and then it shot up. It's up 382%. That's if these were on your radar. Now, again, KuCoin, coins on KuCoin are margin traded most of the time. This probably did, and then the, the day traders just hammer it 100 to 1 margin. They pump it up, and then we know what happens. But in that case, ERI, TSI got hold of it. And not so much here. Let's see. XMR, Pirate J. Sure, we can look at that. In a bull market, I, you know, you don't see as many of these. You're mostly seeing the coins we're familiar with. Let's look at Immutable X here for a minute. Immutable X, okay. All right, hold the hold the phone. This is on one of our lists, an active trader. I uh, So Immutable X. Very nice. Okay, so let's open this up a bit. We have an ERI back here that also had a TSI signal back in here. And it went up 
200%. Okay. It's not financial advice, just showing you the patterns. What are we seeing right now? Same thing percolating. So ERI and a bullish engulfing candle. This is on Coinbase. And we have a TSI about to go over the 20 line. So I'd put an alert on that, add alert, crossing up 20 line. Oops. All right, I'm gonna do that once per bar close. I wanna know every time it happens because this thing is a proven runner. It's a winner. And so, all right, that means I've got 400 alerts and I've used them up because I've been putting a lot of alerts on things. So I am unfortunately handicapped. I need to get rid of some alerts. So basically though, <coughs> this is um, what I wanna look, look out for. And Immutable X looks really good here. So what we'd also wanna see and set an alert on for those of you that have more alerts, to see when you know when this thing turns to green. So uh, I would put that on your uh, your radar there, immutable X, Pure, purely based on the uh, those three indicators starting to line up, and we could turn on the trend indicator, which is not that's the four horsemen that uh, we could watch. Now the trend indicator. Let me open that up. Now this, of course, we want to at least have a midline that's green. And this is that midline there. We at least want to see that go green and start then to turn up and have a key and a bell. So with Immutable X, we also saw that because when in doubt, zoom out, where did we see that run that we were looking at, that last beautiful run that it made? That was back here. And uh, in January of 2023, beginning of the year, and we had the bell. Let's see, I'm going to open this up a bit so we can see this a little better. But I don't want to lose the uh, scanner there that we have here. Well, let's just do this. So we have the ERI right there, January 2nd. And then we have the TSI right around then, January 4th, broke the 20 line right there. And then we had on trend indicator, we had a key also on the 20, on the fourth rather, and it was starting to turn green and then boom, we had the bell, green midline went for the bell, okay? And it had a beautiful series. It had one, take profits, bell, two, another bell, trend didn't quite complete, another bell hit there. So we had four take profit events, one and two, uh, I guess technically three, the bag of money, and then this one up top, where is a partial sell, you know, but you get the point. So right here, we're watching for this to turn green and give us a key and a bell. Uh, when you get all four, the four horsemen, as we call them, that doesn't get much better than that. And guys, this is, I believe, zoom in, a bullish engulfing candle. Yeah. So this is very bullish setup here. Uh, that's trying to get that just right bullish engulfing candle and we had two we had one just before it smaller double i haven't seen that very often a double bullish engulfing candle now here's a bearish engulfing well here's, we almost had two bearish engulfings in a row <clears throat> but um you know pay attention to these bullish engulfing candles because they tend to follow through right back here bullish engulfing shot up higher probably got outside the bollinger band and sold off yeah, it's got above that third Bollinger Band. See how powerful that is. Pulled back down. Might have had a rocket in here somewhere if we put that on. That's one of our special indicators in Active Trader. Uh, and then we uh, shot up here again. We had another bullish engulfing candle. Shot up immediately into a bearish engulfing. Went down, went down, went down. So these are these are really simple indicators, especially when used with, with ours. Bearish engulfing, came down, sold off, recovered a bit. Bullish engulfing. Up or down, this is sort of an indecision candle. Now we have bullish engulfing ERI, so that early reversal indicator, so powerful. Our TSI turning green, about to go above 20, and signal line turning up higher. This is setting up very nicely, everybody. So IMX, immutable X, keep that on your radar. <clears throat> Not financial advice, all that. All right, let's look at XMR really quick. 
All uh, right, and let's see, we'll just do it on uh, perpetual. Do we want to do the perpetual? That's the futures. We can um, we can do it on Monero, that's fine. I want to have enough history. So um, what do we have here? All right, looks interesting. I'll turn off the uh, Bollinger Band there. We have, is that a bullish engulfing candle? It looks like it's not quite. Tried to do it, but it's, it's a small nuance, it's certainly bullish. But it didn't it didn't engulf the entire candle from the day before. So, you know, is it still bullish? It's still, it's still pretty bullish. Do we have an ERI? We don't have an ERI though. So that's questionable. And uh, however, TSI, uh, you know, it doesn't mean the TSI can't give us a good signal. So TSI is turning higher. I'd like to see it above the 20 line. Here's what I would do here, Jay. Uh, like we saw before, is we want to draw this. So yeah, I mean, in this case, it lines up. Above 20 is a good signal. If it rejects at the 20, then probably gonna have some trouble. And that could be bearish divergence if it starts turning higher in price, but rejects on the TSI. Okay, we have a signal line going green and we have a key. So this is interesting. Now I'd wait for that green line and a bell. Now you're in a trade already, I get it. So if you're looking to dollar cost average, I'd wait for a new bell and all these. It's interesting to me that we don't have, usually the ERI leads the TSI signal and bell, usually, not always. Uh, so let's, let's zoom out on, see if we see anything else on that, on that structure there. Um, all right, well, I mean, long-term Fibonacci, see what's going on there. Thing with that is, um, I think it goes lower. I think specifically, <clears throat> it, it comes down to the golden pocket. <clears throat> Pardon me, you guys. And um, on these longer time frames, so you know, it doesn't mean it has to. But if I would be a buying, that's your buy zone. And you can see this sort of liquidity in here struggled a bit up at this level came down through it's more of a zone but the fibonacci retracement down into this point zero zero five eight it, it could come down and touch this point zero zero six just below that that would be a place i would be looking to dollar cost average if our indicators start to turn up um <clears throat> if you're in a long-term hold you know you may not may or may not want to add to it but so you know, uh, that's what I see in the Fibonacci side, but I always like to look at the downside and then there's a pretty obvious support resistance level right in there. Uh, you know, the thing with Monero is it's, it's a, you know, a privacy coin. It's got a lot of great community, been around a while. It's kind of lost its sexiness though. The new wave of crypto traders that came in <clears throat> they're not, it's not like, it's not the, forgive my analogy, but it's not the hot girl at the dance anymore. You know, all these new things that come out and we're wired for novelty and I'm not bragging on Monero. I just think it needs something new. It needs some merger. It's got to come out with something new. And also the problem is that with SEC targeting things like staking, you know, it's a privacy coin. They're in the crosshairs. And SEC, you know, they're not going to want, these are the coins that they can't uh, ostensibly see or watch or, and that's going to put them in hot water. I think, <clears throat> look at the, how, how fast it's dropped off here in January. Um, is that right? Let's see. But isn't that interesting though, that it rallied so hard in 2022? I think that was, so, and, and it barely sold off. So September 22, huh, okay. But it had a nice recovery while the rest of the markets were selling off last year. And, uh, you know, it hit its old, old, its old all time high, broke through that. So that's what I'd also be thinking about is on the next bull run, how high will it go? And, um, you know, there's a number of things you could do here. I mean, I think it's early. I, this, this isn't your exact question, but 
these Fibonacci golden pockets are really interesting. Do you see that? So from the high uh, back in May 20th, 2021, came down here, bounced uh, off of the Feb 22, came uh, right up here. Let me turn off the other uh, Fib here, but came right up to the golden pocket and rejected twice. So you see that a lot. And then came up here. So that, that's one reason why I think this comes down to retest that golden pocket Fibonacci. I mean, it's just, it's some of it is self-fulfilling. Who knows? That Fibonacci ratio is so pervasive in a lot of things. So that's what I'd be looking to um, dollar cost average in. So hopefully it adds, adds, adds to your, <laughs> answers your question and adds to your knowledge on XMR. But currently I don't see any reason to um, jump in here. I mean, I'm just drawing lines in the sand. I wouldn't sell, I think, probably a stop loss in this region because if it breaks, here, here's what my thoughts are, is uh, if it breaks down below this and can't hold this level, then it likely goes down. Why did that happen? No, oh, wrong button. Uh, it likely comes down in this uh, fib golden pocket. So, you know, generally what I would suggest, have a stop loss right below the support to sell half. And then with the idea to buy back in a likely support zone, once our indicators turn back green, dollar cost average in. Why half? Because oftentimes people don't, they, they don't buy back in and they miss the big move. So that's my thoughts on XMR. All right, let's kind of come back into the uh, list here. So we had immutable X. Uh, EOS, this is the 3X long on EOS. What's going on with EOS? I probably don't want to pull this up. Not much happening with EOS. Um, you know, it, well, I take that back. I mean, I do really like these bottoming rounding patterns because we saw that with Haven coin, which is built on Monero. I like Haven coin a lot. So I don't know. I, I think, uh, now this is the three X long on EOS, but that looks interesting. All green on the radar. So let's see what else do we have? We have our ERI in here at all. Okay, we had a number of BERIs in the bottom. What say you, TSI? What says our TSI? And TSI is still coming down, um, you know, questionable. I'd, li I'd like it more when it comes out of the overbought zone, turns from red to green. So that's, you know, we're kind of flatlining on the signal line, but this isn't the underlying. So we're not going to go by that. Ba let's look at the underlying. By the way, I met the founders of EOS in 2014 at a Bitcoin mastermind in St. Martin. Stan and Dan Larimer, and they were saying uh, uh, Dan was the next Steve Jobs, and he's a smart guy, but um, hasn't quite uh, done what, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, though. It's one to keep an eye on. I don't know. I see a trend channel. The biggest thing I see here is, although it's not a very strong uptrending uh slope i guess you know here you know it's sort of a meek a meager upslope and uh where is it i want to give it do another one in contrast this was nice nice i look for velocity and upslope so this was a much better time we saw eris you saw tsis going green signal we had keys and bells this was back here in 2022 eos took off right now this is not really as exciting as it all right enough about eos that's where I first heard about, and they were saying, someday you'll be able to share your favorite song with a friend and get paid for referring the song using crypto. And we were all like, what? We're starting to see that sort of, you know, crypto, blockchain, partial ownership of art, things like that. Uh, all right, guys, we're coming up on the hour. Let me just skim through these. Uh, again, if you're here for Crypto Mastery, we're here to look at the indicators, what's moving. Uh, if you have any questions about the indicators, let us know. If you don't have the indicators yet, you can go to cryptomastery.online. Or if you want to join our M3 Trader Group, that is just moonstream.io slash M3. And that includes the indicators that were shown today and a lot of other stuff you can read there. Most of you are in both here today, if not all of you, but this is going to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe, all of that. 
And uh, you can find out more at those two websites, cryptomastery.online and moonstream.io slash M3. Ren, I don't know. Ren, I just, uh, Ren is dead to me. I don't know. The last bull run, I won't say it's dead to me, but it's got a ways to go. When we have all this chop here, this is when you want to go to a weekly. Now, the weekly will give you more clear signals. So I just went to a weekly on Ren and uh, works. You know, these indicators generally work best with coins with longer history and more volume. But you can see here on a weekly basis, really strong signals here, right back here at the top and on top. And so we're in a bearish structure with the Ren weekly and but still heading higher on the uh, TSI. So inconclusive, we want to look for congruence in this. So here, just looking back here, we had the red ERI there. I know it's a little hard to see, so I'll open this up. And then the TSI, this is what we look for. Up in the overbought zone, green turning to red, and then red breaking below 80. When you have those scenarios, generally you see a full cycle out of it. So it came all the way down. It was a great short signal from there with that confluence. Confluence, however you say that. Confluence, confluence. I don't know how to say it, just uh, here. And then, but recently we had a bullish ERI, TSI combo here. But what wasn't as deep, so it may run out of steam here. I think the more you see this, the more you pick up on the nuances, though. So uh, anyway, guys, anything else? Uh, I don't see anybody else, so we can wrap things up here. If you want to, if you're in watching the replay on YouTube, if you want to put a coin in the chat, we'll try to watch it next week. And uh, let's see, Loom Network. Why does that sound familiar? No, never mind. Something else. So basically, what we're seeing here, uh, not a lot happening now. We're in a bear market, though. What I should do is look and sort it by strong sell because the strong sells generally bounce and turn back around. So uh, let's see if any of these are ones we watch here and not seeing a lot happening. Dogecoin, not going to look at the KDA Bitcoin pair. Kadena, not doing much. Uh, Zcash, Zcash, let's see what's going on in Zcash. Mm, just, just real low volume, guys. Not a lot happening. Uh, don't let your guard down, though. A great time for you to... Fine tune your skills. Start looking for these because when, when the when a move happens, it's going to happen pretty fast. And um, Kadena is in an uptrend, but hit resistance up in this level. But you would think Kadena would benefit from Solana issues. Let's take a look at Solana, by the way, because that was uh, obviously not getting great news here today. And uh, let's do Coinbase. That away, Solana weekly bearish ERI up in overbought territory. So I would not be buying Solana here, although still bullish, could push higher. For I don't just no, I take that back. I mean, it's got to really break out above that and that channel here. Oops, <clears throat> you know. So I think Solana cycles down and looks like buy and comes back down in that range. Now you are on the daily, you know, it, uh, it, it hasn't sold off too much, but um, I guess they were just added to Coinbase, not last year. Let me pull a longer one that has more history. Come on now. I was sure they had longer history because we, I recommended Solana at 35. There it is. $35 way back August 2021. So we had a great run on that. And I mean, Solana will, will run again. And we sort of have a nice, ugly, but nice cup and handle forming. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, we, uh, let's see, we had a, remember we, we did a paper trade on this back in here. And all three of our take profit zones were hit, except for the, the golden pocket. T TP1 and two were hit. Didn't quite get there. So, unless I didn't draw it correctly. Well, all right. 
you know, you don't want to go back and cherry pick and redraw charts, but here we have the high <laughs> and the real low is here. So we extend that out. It did. It did hit the golden pocket, which would have been take profit three. When we drew this, it hadn't pulled down. We were drawing it on the low back here, which didn't feel right. But do you see that, you guys? Um, this is such a great pattern if you can <clears throat> spot it early. From the tippy top up here all the way to the bottom right there, this is the 0.7618 uh, Fibonacci touched right there. If you had bought down in this range, and had a sell order in right at $27, you would have had a great trade. Everyone see that? Now, how was that supported? It was supported by little tiny ERI here, but that's TSI breaking strongly with nice velocity. Look at that, went straight up. Um, broke above the 20. And that's a strong sign. Here's another nuance, see how this one here, these are different trading periods, okay? So this one had printed here and didn't break above 20 till the second day of the bounce. This one here, really strong, boom, boom. These are the strong ones with velocity. They usually go all the way up in the cycle. Uh, so, and then with here, we also have the T as the signal going green and the bell. So this is, can't get better than that. The only thing that would have been better here was a larger green arrow, but that's okay. Three out of four isn't bad. And you also had a bullish engulfing candle right down here as an early warning. <clears throat> but as soon as that bounced off of this low, you should have been drawing your fib golden pocket and said, all right, where am I going to be taking profits? So we said, take the profit here. That hit. Take profit two up in this range. I forget why. I think just the local high. And then right at the golden pocket. Beautiful trade. If any of you uh, took that, by the way. And ignore this. I don't normally watch this. Okay. Well, we're out of time, everybody. Um, you know, watch your radar. Watch your signals. Again, if you uh, are able to check off the boxes, if you have our interactive trade confirmation sheet, that's in the active trader group, but um, it's great to have that handy. Check those off. The more you can check off, the more likely that trade will go your way. And uh, right now we're in a waiting zone for these things to come down and kind of fully put in a bottom. So uh, that's all we have for you this week, everybody. Thanks for joining. And uh, we will talk to you again next week and see if we don't have some more direction. It should be, I think things will heat up mid month toward the end of the month. If we are going to bottom and double test that here, sorry, this one, if, we, if we, we're either gonna push up here to that 30,000 and reject and come down in my opinion, uh, or we'll sort of reject here, come down and retest these lower ranges, maybe even 14,000 still on the table, but uh, that still could happen and then we push higher. And the reason is, you know, we saw that back in 2020, 2015, this was, this was like the bottom, this was the bottom and it came down and retested a few months after it pushed higher. And it doesn't look like it pushed much higher, but that was similar to what we've just done in this 50% kind of bounce up in this range. That was, that was actually 84% from the, the big dip, but it did come, it came back down and retested and it was down 46%. So you know, if we were to go down 46%, this is one of the things we cover in Active Trader every week. You know, that puts us at 46%, puts us at 13,000, call it 14,000. Like I said, that's why it's still on the table, you guys. Strong support back here uh, from June 19th. Support here flipped as, sorry, resistance. I'm sorry, resistance, resistance flipped as support here. And, um, you know, we didn't come down and touch it. We held here at 16,500 range, midpoint of this vector candle. But that's another thing too I want to point out. Midpoint of this vector candle touched. This one hasn't. So that's why I have this drawn here. And not only is there the CME gap, but this would be the touch point, the midpoint of that vector candle here, which uh, generally I find these, these do retest. So I'll draw that down a little bit, maybe like there. That would be 
19,500. You guys, that's my prediction on a bounce. We'll cover that more in Active Trader tomorrow. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, we'll talk to you next next time. And uh, I'll probably have a market update end of the week. And I'm starting to do those on uh, TradingView. Uh, if you haven't already, you can follow me on TradingView under Brett Fogel. Let's see. Hang on a second. Talk about it. I've got a thing on the DXY there. You can search. I don't think it's there. You have to do it on Google there and uh, trading view. So I do some quick updates there and also on Twitter. Yeah, so if you Google it and uh, all right, I'm using my VPN, so it thinks I'm somewhere else. There you go. And for so for intermittent updates, things like that, uh, usually I'll post these in the Active Trader private chat, but sometimes also here, BTC bull flag breakout. We kind of touched on that here. And we've been watching this here over the past few weeks. So, so if you want more sort of uh, insight into that, you can see that there. Okay. All right, everyone. Have a great week. See ya.